Sure. Can I start? Can you see the slide? Yes, ma'am. Today, uh, I would, if you have any problem, you just uh, tell me. You have me no problem because if you don't see any you no know, point of uh, having the lectures today. Uh, today we'll start this digestive system of farm animal. Did you, I mean, have you done the practicals for this? Have you finished the practical for digestive system? Yes, ma'am. We haven't done the practical theory, no? Theory part, have we finished? No. Okay, okay. Uh, so here, uh, digestive system of ruminants, especially we give more importance because, you know, they are made up with a complex of stomach. You know, they eat the roughages, the grasses, the roughages. But they use uh, the poor quality material. But they give value product, you know, the milk of the ruminants, especially. Uh, they are very uh, good in nutrition. How this happens? And they are eating the grasses, but they are giving high quality products. So the mechanism you will be studying, how they be converted. But here, what helps? The digestive system. That's the main component which helps to convert the super quality material to high quality one. You know, the plant proteins are high quality, especially the meat is having all essential uh, nutrients. So milk and meat is very uh, rich in nutrition, nutrients. So that's the thing because it has a complex stomach. It has four compartments in stomach, but we have only one. So you know we have a stomach which we call two stomach. There is only one. So the digestion takes place in ruminants and non-ruminants. We used to call non-ruminants or monogastic are different. So one of the most important jobs of any farm is to correct feeding. So important thing in animal farming, animal science, so what you study, the thing the very, very important is feeding. So the feeding, um, feeding is the one which uh, governs everything in animal feed. In order to do this effectively, the portion should know how much each type of animal can feed and how it gets digested. So here we will study in anatomy, we will study anatomy and physiology, what are the components in the digestive system, special attention we give for the complex stomach, because other things are quite similar, if like starting from the mouth, oral cavity, if like the stomach, stomach there are four, rumen, reticulum, omasum, abomasum, and then duodenum, jejunum, ileum, large intestine, there are three parts, and then the anus, the rectum. So that's most similar, but we give a more important for the uh, stomach. So I'm, I'm going to do more on uh, simple stomach, sorry, the complex stomach. So here we study the structure, the anatomy, and the physiology. Okay. Simple stomach, non ruminant especially pig, okay, uh, cat's dog, a human, we say simple stomach. Multi stomach digestive system, cattle, sheep, goat, and buffalo. Uh, the digestive system of muscular membranous tube extending from the mouth to the anus, starting from the mouth and extending in the anus. So the functions are uh, uh, digestion, indigestion, ingestion, sorry, ingestion. Ingestion means taking the food into the oral cavity, the process of taking the food and then grinding. So the oral cavity takes uh, helping to grind. And then the digestion takes place in the stomach, then absorption of food and elimination of waste, solid waste. The digestive tract consists of a tube lined with a mucous membrane that is continuous with an external skin and the mouth and the uh, A. So whatever the tubic structure, you shall have four parts, four layers. Four layers making up the wall of the digestive system. It's very, very important because that modification in the wall will takes the I mean will help to perform different functions. 
the epithelium, so that's the inner layer, stratified squamous epithelium to the glandular part of the stomach and simple columnar from there on. So in stomach it's made up with the uh, half part is made up with the uh, stratified squamous because you know stomach is also performing grinding function. It mixes it up, mixes it so say very hard and some part, latter part, uh, it's made up with a simple squamous, uh, simple columnar cells. There may be secreting. So secreting function we have simple. Absorption function, so if any part is performing secretion or absorption, we have simple uh, layers. Then the lamina propria is the muscular mucosa, uh, it's sort of a connective tissue. Then the muscle, so the muscles, two ways, uh, two muscles, striated and circular muscles. Uh, okay, uh, sorry, um, uh, striated means the skeletal muscles. The skeletal muscle is coming, uh, I mean, so in a uh, human, the monogastric animal is made up with a smooth muscle, but in ruminants, it's made up with uh, skeletal muscle because you know ruminants used to take the food after they eat, uh, they, uh, after the food goes to the stomach, they take up to the um, oral cavity again, they chew mastigation, mastigation means grinding. So, this function. Regurgitation. So you know when the animals, uh, especially with uh, cattle, they used to graze continuously in the field. But after sometimes, we, especially in the evening, they lie down somewhere in a good shadow place and they start of chewing. So chewing that so because that piece of feathers is made up with the scaly muscle. So they used to take up the food again to the oral healthy. In the same, they chew, masticate, and then after that they send the gift. Then fourth layer is the um, zero cell covering. It's a peritone. It's a thin tissue. It's just the cover. So it's the four tissues made up. So this is the peritoneum. Peritoneum. This peritoneum covering is the four. It's a thin layer. See? Yes. See? This is the portion of the digestive system. Mouth. Sarin. Sarin. Esophagus. Stomach. Post stomach, small intestine, large intestine, anus, and accessory glands. Accessory glands are not uh, part of the digestive part, not in the pubic structure, but they just help. Salivary glands, liver, pancreas, they help for the digestion. Mouth is grind for the grinding, mixing the food with the saliva. So that's a prehensile organ. Prehensile means taking, grasping the food. Take some, you know, we have to take the food through mouth. So animals used to take, use the mouth to take, pick up the food. Oh, it's uh, sometimes what has defense and offense weapons to animals. The teeth and the tongue are surrounded by lips, cheeks, muscles to operate the jaw. The function of the oral cavity and associated include prehension, mastigation, incivilization, and bolus formation. Prehension means uh, the act of taking food. Mastication, grinding, insulization means mixing up with saliva and the forming bolus, bolus, okay, to send the food to the epithelium. Then the teeth, teeth develop from an invagination of epithelium known as dental lamina, so that's in the embryonic development. Teeth are, uh, teeth are of cutting or sharing type as found in incisors. So, you know, these type of teeth, incisor teeth, canine teeth, molars, and premolars. So, incisors of all animal and grinding type are seen in premolars and molars. So, in herbivores, that's more developed. Ruminants have a dental pad. So, what is a dental pad in upper uh, incisor? Instead of upper incisor, they expuse and make as a dental pad. So, this is the dental pad. The upper is the lower part, the incisor. So this one is two. We call dental pad. If the ruminants are heavy, and you see inside there are papillae. So these are papillae. The
that represents a large number of papillae. So I showed the picture of papillae, particularly uh, on the dorsal surface of the tongue is covered with the papillae. The tongue of the cow that leaves cheeks which helps to digestion of the food. Are soft and flexible, and that's helping to pick up food for these animals. Tips of cattle hogs mean pigs are very stiff and immobile. There's little more to choose the more than to close the food. Cheeks are muscular structures, the hard palate forms the roof of the mouth, the hard palate forms the roof of the mouth, the palate, you know, uh, the upper, uh, if you take the oral cavity. Uh, upper portion, the roof of the mouth, we call the heart palate. Uh, latter part, okay, we need to go into esophagus, it's soft palate. Heart palate forms the roof of the mouth and it continues cordially, okay, by the soft palate, which separates the mouth from the cell. Heart palate and the soft palate. And the latter portion is soft. The oral cavity, uh, the lining of the oral cavity is thickened and highly conified, means keratinized. Especially at the dental parts of the rumen, cheek, heart palate, and the oral side. So these are keratinized because you know they act. Any the cattle they eat very coarse food, very harsh food. Coarse we call hard, no? The rough edges. So that may damage the oral cavity. So that they have the, their digestive system there. Especially that oral cavity is well adapted. Glands are common in subcutaneous of the mouth. So there are glands there. They create like anything. The lips are covered with the skin externally, the mucous membrane internally, the cheeks have the same layer externally. But the ruminant uh, cheeks bear large conified papillae. So the ruminant cheeks they have papillae. So the picture I showed they have papillae here. You see it's the cheek. It has the papillae. It's the papillae. Because that's to help digestion. Okay. The hard palate contains transverse ridges formed by thickening of the muscular mucous membrane. The thickening all these helps for the digestion, mastication. The oral side of the cells, soft palate, is covered with stratified cells. So the oral cavity may be covered with stratified cells. These are uh, circular, circumscribed masses of lymphoid tissue. You know. The place mouth where you eat, where the animal eat a lot. So there are maybe a lot of uh, pathogens, uh, foreign bodies are coming to help to fight against that. It is have to have good uh, immune system, immune system which protects your body. The immunes, immunoglobins, immunes, you know, immune system means that helps you for defense, defense for the pathogen. Palatine tonsils, tonsils are the uh, immune organ. It helps in immune, so the palatine tonsil, lingual tonsil, palatine means closed, I mean they are in the palate, uh, palate. lingual means they are close to the tongue, the pharyngeal in the uh, pharyngeal region of the uh, mouth. So these are tonsils, they are lymphatic organs, help to produce uh, the cells and to kill the pathogen, foreign body. Next, the salivary gland, which is an extra, uh, accessory gland. Salivary glands are extramural glands that are associated with the oral cavity. The secretion of the salivary glands can be serous. Serous means watery, mucus little thick, and mixed. So serous mucus means serous means like watery. Okay, serous secretion. So if you say serous, it's like watery. Mucus is thicker, can be mixed. So the secretions from the salivary glands are with different consistency. The saliva contains enzymes, ions, mucins, mucus. It has water, sodium, potassium, chloride, bicarbonate, and phosphate. The examples for salivary glands, the name of the salivary glands, labial, buccal, palatal, carotid, salivary gland, submandibular, submandibular. Functions of salivary gland, solubilized food. What are the functions? So I just listing. So you go through this. Uh, I mean, these are the things. So the food provides a buffer 
remove waste, lubricate, initiate the digestion. Amylase is there. It's an enzyme which helps start digestion. Uh, and it has the lysozyme, which helps, it has this IgA means an immunoglobin, which helps to protect the pathogen. Uh, in enzymes, it's cooling, evaporating. You know, the animal, when their heat is more heat, they put the tongue out and they start to evaporate. The saliva helps to evaporate the heat. That's the thing. The sarin is a common passageway for food and air. Yeah. The first uh, passes, the, as the food first passes the mouth, it enters the saliva. It extends from the internal arteries of the esophagus. So that connects the oral cavity with the trachea and the esophagus. So that's a common passage. So that's what the people, your parents or your grandparents do. Don't talk while you uh, eat because that portion, there's a lid and the lid like structure cover. With that open when you are talking, it's open the trachea. So the food goes to the trachea. So there may be a lot of um, lot of uh, distress. Even the death can happen if food goes to the trachea. Part of the trachea is with the pelia. They start to remove this food part of the they end up with the coughing and some more of the distress. Sometimes even that they were small children and uh, death due to this um, problem. Opening of into the nares, into the nares are the mouth, two posterior nares, two station tubes. Is the figures and then the initial portion of the pharynx is lined with a tuber column ciliated epithelium. Or a portion is uh, lined with satisfied squamous epithelium. The soft palate divides the rostral portion, rostral, that more cochranial portion of the pharynx into the oropharynx and nasopharynx. The choral portion of the pharynx is called the angular pharynx. The larynx is where the air crosses the larynx and the food and the water crosses the esophagus. That is the place where this can happen. So it's located between the base of the epiglottis. So epiglottis is the one with closed and open. And it's a page that is you may know that I studied in the past level. And I'm going more in that. Then the swallowing, act of swallowing or deglutition. Deglutition or swallowing the same meaning. So if I ask, um, explain the process of deglutition, the don't get confused. So that's swallowing. Move food, food from through the esophagus to the pharynx to the esophagus so that it can be transported to the stomach. Saliva. So there are three steps. Saliva helps for that. Volatile voluntary stage is the knowledge with the conscious stage. The allergic stage is the vegetal stage. What happens is the volatile stage or voluntary stage. Here the bowl is the food bolus moves to the oropharynx, pharyngeal stage, the bolus moves involuntary without kind of, without the that consciously, I mean subconsciously, through the pharynx to esophagus. Esophageal stage, the bolus moves involuntary to the esophagus to the tongue. The tongue, after forming a bolus, uh, propels it from the oral cavity to the oropharynx. The presence of a bolus in the oropharynx. So the presence of a particle in the oral cell makes the stimuli. Initiate the pharyngeal stages through which impulses are carried to the deglutition center. Deglutition center, you study with different portions in the nervous system, in the lower brain data, uh, the lower parts of the brain cell. Motor signals from these centers flow for the nasopharynx and for the larynx to move forward, upward, and allowing the epiglots to move backward and downward, peeling off the remoglotis, the opening of the larynx, and after the bolus travel from the laryngeal pharynx to the epiglots. Then there is the the So you'll see this um, epiglottis, so this is, you can see the epiglottis, the cartilage, So the esophagus, esophagus is a collapsible muscular tube lying behind the trachea. It extends from the laryngopharynx, passes through the mediastinum, pierces the diaphragm at the esophageal hiatus, hiatus is the opening, and ends at the superior portion of the stomach. So esophagus, you know, is starting uh, from after the mouth, okay, it's the laryngopharynx. Passes through mediastinum means near the chest region, mediastinum chest region, and it pierces the diaphragm. So you know there's a diaphragm, there's a hiatus opening. Hiatus means an opening at the diaphragm. It 
here is the diagram and the each of edges highlights the name. Just read it, the name. So you know the diagram. So if at the end of the uh, both uh, lungs, there's a diagram. So that diagram, you know, is fully covered. So there is only a portion of highlights there. It is the passage of this interpreter. Okay. So you know because the diagram is very important to maintain the pressure. So because of the negative and positive pressure will help inhalation, exhalation, breathing. So there won't be any holes in the diaphragm, but there is a hole in the uh, diaphragm that is to uh, allow the space to go in the of it. So that portion hides, which is very covered only in the of the big one. Okay, it has four layers. That's what I mentioned earlier. Uh, muscular portion of the esophagus vary with the species. Okay, so esophagus uh, for a monogastric animal is made up with smooth muscles. Ruminant animal is made up with skeletal muscles. The birds the esophagus uh, consists entirely smooth muscles, but in dogs, cats, pigs, and ruminants, it is mostly smooth muscles. There are a small portion of skeletal muscles here. Okay. Stomach, the stomach is located at the inferior end of the esophagus and the cranial portion of the abdominal cavity. It's uh, found left of the median plane. The function, storage, mechanical breakdown, disruption of chemical bonds, and cell absorption. So, when monogastric animals have simple stomach, simple single stomach, while the ruminants have multiple, two compartments, four chambered stomach. So, this is very important. There are If you don't eat for a long time, the hydrogastric acid, which is produced by the stomach, will like the own cells. So that's why you end up with ulcers, gastritis, ulcers. The anatomy of the ruminant stomach, the ruminants are those animals that ruminate through their gut. They have modified stomach that consists three non secretory food stomach and a secretory food stomach. Uh, the first stomach includes reticulum, rumen, omentum. The food stomach, abomentum. Abomentum, they are the normal, I mean, the food digestion, what we, enzymatic digestion, enzymes help in the uh, abomentum. The other are uh, different. The food stomach serves as a large fermentation chamber while microbial digestion occurs along with it. So, in four stomach, four stomach means rumen, reticulum, omentum. So, there are a collection of microbes, okay, beneficial microbes are there. Bacteria, protozoa, fungus are there, fungi are there. So they help with microbial digestion, fermentation, microbial digestion, there are different names. So in that mechanical digestion, mainly by the animal stomach, but these uh, microflora, uh, the rumor liquor, we call the rumor liquor, which is have uh, beneficial microbes are there which help in the digestion of food of the baby. So animal uh, itself cannot secrete cellulase enzyme, cellulase enzyme which helps to digest cellulose, which is lacking in animals. But the microbes, bacteria and fungi and protozoa, they some of them can secrete cellulase. So because of the secretion of cellulase from microbes, grass, plant material. Okay, that's the, the how the digestion is different. The four uh, stomach serve as a large fermentation chamber where microbial digestion occurs, allowing ruminants to digest the uh, feedstuff not available to them. So these are the uh, parts that I think you would have seen in your slaughterhouse recently. Have you seen these in slaughterhouse? Yes, yes, sir. The fermentation uh, end product. So that is very important because you know it's different. Uh, it's not in uh, non ruminant animal, monogastric animal. But it's quite different because the first problem, the thing is microflora in this Roman liquor. We call Roman liquor, uh, Roman microflora, that is having a sort of uh, a liquid material. Semi uh, sort of the liquid material it is having all these microbes, good microbes, fungi, and protozoa that helps. They secrete different enzymes, not only cellulose, some other enzymes 
contaminate those things. So those are the plant material. You know, we can't uh, eat the plant raised as it. We have to process, cook it to break down this bond. Then only we can eat. So you know, they like we even we eat the vegetables, we use to cook or process because we can we don't have the cellulase. Even animal doesn't have the cellulase. So the ruminants they help the microbes help. For us, we we cannot eat. So we use to cut, chop. That was a sort of processing material. Okay. Cook. So that is the processing material. Processing things to. Uh, overcome this problem of cellulose. Uh, the fermentation in products are, so the process, I mean the digestion process in the post stomach we call the microbial digestion, fermentation. Okay. Fermentation in products are volatile fatty acids are absorbed and used as a metabolic substrate. So these volatile fatty acids are acetic acid, butyric acid, propionic acid. The main, there are three main volatile fatty acids produced at the end of the uh, fermentation in the post stomach are uh, acetic acid, butyric acid, propionic acid. It is not mentioned in the slide, but just remind, make a note. Okay, so uh, the isocyte, so that, that, that is the substrate that will produce uh, different amino acids, different fatty acids, and glucose for the analysis of blood. So that is the major one. The isocyte connects uh, with the reticulum and the cardiac opening. Cardiac opening means opening of the, the place where these two, uh, these two fuse. The reticulum is separated from heart by only a diaphragm. The hardware, such as nails, wires, enter the reticulum. So you know, animal when they are eating, they um, they cannot. I mean, they keep on eating. They don't uh, select the, this keep on eating. So all these materials, the nails, wire, the heart object will go. So that may go and uh, stay in the reticulum. So the reticulum is close to the heart. So this can pierce the heart and end up with some disease, pericardial disease, hardware disease, we call that. The lining of the reticulum has a honeycomb arrangement and arranges. The reticulum is separated from the rumen by luminal reticular pores or good pores are from invagination. They are invagination and part of the They are imaginations uh, of whatever is uh, skin. If they make some imagination, we call the groups so of four. So in stomach, if they fold and imaginate, we call the groups. That is the thing. Okay. While we separate the two chambers, there are there uh, there remains an opening connecting to. Okay. So this is uh, I mean this uh, and the large stomach make most in, in the cells inside the abdominal cavity. Therefore, the rumen and the reticulum act as a functional rumen, the rumino reticular rumen, which lines with keratinized squamous epithelium. So you know why that um, I have marked because keratinized means uh, stratified many layers squamous epithelium. Because you know these are I mean the animal eats a lot of cars, grasses, plant material all kind of leaves and those things are very hard, they may damage the intestinal lining, stomach lining. So to worry with, uh, I mean to avoid that, this rumen reticulum omega align is keratinized, stratified squamous epithelium. In young animal, the reticulo omega fold or we call that reticular groove, uh, prevents food uh, that entering the rumen instead of uh, direct to the Abdomen. So you know you have studied the luminal reticular group. So there is a uh, temporary group in animal, young animal, soon after the birth, it's formed. It, uh, I mean it's formed during the stimulation. So it's direct from the esophagus to the abdomen. It makes the group. So the uh, rumen, reticulum, omegum are not well developed during the birth. So soon after birth, they are not developed. So the later on only they will develop. So soon after birth, only the abomegum is well developed because you know the animals they used to take meat for their life first, first for their life. So the uh, colostrum and the milk, which is produced by the mother, will nourish the young. So they, at that time, the abomegum is more adapted, I mean, well developed. So 
if it is going to if the milk is going to omit some particular hormone there is another the end product won't be the desired one there may be fermented product which is not useful for the animal so that's what it allows a make a tempo, temporary grow uh, it's formed during the suckling it's direct from the esophagus to the abdomen if the milk is the, the milk ingested during suckling this can put their fermentation and so it can directly the abdomen to the omitter so it can go omitter can and uh, omitter reticular growth and different names are there but it is a principle by it connects from the esophagus to the uh, abdomen while it uh, coming to different places like reticular growth and omitter it gives different name groups so this group closes as a result of reflex initiated by stimulation of receptors in the mountain water so this i think you will learn in practical class in very detail this reflex diminishes with age the stimulating the reticular group the rumen sometimes called pouch occupies almost the entire left side of the abdominal cavity the rumen is divided so now we come to the rumen rumen very largest compartment which have uh, divided into ventral and dorsal sac by cranial and caudal pillars are folds as well as the right and left ventricular pillars the dorsal sac is further divided into cranial sac and dorsal sac cranial sac formed between the ruminal reticular fold and cranial pillars the dorsal sac and the caudal dorsal line sac the luminal surface means inside the inner lining in the lining in the surface of the rumen is lined with the papillae papillae are there to increase the surface area then the omentum 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 is the kid shape which lies into the right of the uh, rumino reticulum and is located between the rumen and reticulum and abdomen so it's a kid shaped organ it can it line consists of many leaf like folds or cleaves so that attach to the greater curvature with their free edges it can be called a omentum can it is further called as book stomach omentum we call book stomach because in interior it look like a pages of book you would have seen so it is also having a papillae papillae are there there are numerous papillae in the ruminant digestive system especially because to increase the surface area because you know they eat a lot of fast food so they consume at least 8 hours or 10 hours they were eating the cavity you have seen so how the digestion takes place is such a big stomach and to increase the surface area for the mechanical digestion or even the fermentation uh, in the papillae there are many uh, the bacteria can attach so that's why there are papillae the food enters the omentum via the reticular omentum orifice and extends abdomen via the omentum orifice so orifice means open it is something they already it open open Abdomen consists two glandular regions equivalent to the fundus pylorus region of the fundus. The cardiac region is confined to the area adjacent to the omentum abdominal organ. The interior of the abdomen has twin twelve rubies, rubies or folds. They spiral along the fundus and body part. Uh, then it comes as the duodenum. The ruminant stomach provides several advantages compared to monogastric because they, you know they used to eat large variety of fibrous food. Cellulose can be broken down. Uh, it allows to use non-protein nitrogen, urea, uric acid can feed to the animal a limited proportion, but we can feed that can be converted by the rumen microbes to high-value organic nitrogen. Okay, these non-protein nitrogens we call the food protein. the non protein nitrogen like urea uric acid we can uh, mix up with animal food especially the ruminant food we can feed so this will help the non protein nitrogen will help to make up high value organic essential amino acids okay it provides b complex vitamin so that is also action of microbes okay these advantages of the large compartment What are the disadvantages? Okay. So the thing is, in ruminants, if you see, they spend a lot of time in rumination, chewing the gut. They eating, chewing. So they spend most of their lifespan for the day in chewing. And then it has to produce large amount of saliva. 
So that is another thing. We have to produce a large, large amount of saliva to make the digestion. Considerable amounts of water material is artery to the environment. As these means of volatilizing, they can evaporate. So while the animal is doing this process, small portion or considerable portion of the small evaporated to the environment. Then this is very important. This is very, very important. The mortality of the stomach. Mortality. How oh, this action takes place. So you know the Roman woman has a thick, strong contraction here. Roman ventilum or mason. I'm not talking about ab mason. Ab mason is most uh, I mean most like uh, true stomach what we study. But these three different because they have these a uh, lot of cold, boom, papillae. They have strong a thick a sequence of contraction, big contraction, red pattern contraction there that helps to lift up all these two. The mixing sequence spread across the reticulum in a Z pattern. So usually the contraction starting point is there as that's the reticulum. So it begins with a double contraction in the reticulum and proce proceeds across the dorsal lumen to the caudal dorsal area. So here you know a lot of terms are coming, directional terms. So I told in the first class, I told you, it's very important to follow the lecture. Okay. The contraction then propagates through the ventral region of the lumen. So this starts with the reticulum, then it come along and it goes to the ventral region of the lumen. The, this sequence, okay, this sequence provides extensive mixing of lumen content, which disturbs the layering of luminal content. So this stuff means they start to form layers. Because when the body is there, for some time, you know, when you put semi sort of semi liquid in a bottle, you know, they may be layering. So they are layering means no point, no digestion will take place. So that helps to mix up the food, which is having very uh, strong contraction. Soil and sand gathers in the ventral region with the fermentation uh, comes with the production of gas, which must be removed from the. So the gas is produced during this fermentation. The microbial digestion, microbial digestion, fermentation of the same. So in this uh, complex stomach, fermentation or the microbial digestion produce gas, a lot of gas, methane, carbon dioxide. That has to be removed. So that is we call the process eructation. Eructation, the sequence moves gases from the rumen to the oral cavity. You know, the emission of the greenhouse gases you would have studied. The rumen emits a greenhouse methane, especially the methane. So that's what the, uh, it is said that not to keep these uh, cattle farm, uh, especially the animal farm, especially the cattle farm in the urban area because they emit a lot of greenhouse gas, methane, carbon dioxide. So we usually have the farms in off site, away from human popular dense area. The sequence allow the formation of a gas bubble. Which eventually possibly will eject into the surfaces by contraction of the ventral. So, this is, happens all the all this emission, uh, mixing all this because of a strong contraction in the post stomach. Excess accumulation of gas, sometimes the gas accumulates in the reticulum and the rumen that lead to blows of animals. You can see sometimes when you give uh, rice to the animals. Sometimes the people used to give rice to cattle. It's a very, very, very bad practice for them. They, they can eat to a limit, but if you give excess, they form this gas. And sometimes they're difficult to expel out. And lactic acid formation will go bloat. Abdominal region will expand. Okay, so this is the uh, complex stomach. So you know the stomach uh, would have seen in my specimen. specimen. Isophagus, this is the reticulum, lumen, this is the dorsal sac, ventral sac, cododorsal sac, cododorsal sac, ventral dorsal sac, cododorsal sac, ventral sac, the ruminant, so that is the ruminant, that is the rumen, here is the reticulum, omasum, and omasum. So, this is showing a line of gases and the liquid. The development of uh, post stomach, birth to maturity. So, you know, at birth, abomasum is very uh, 
then develop. Other three are not that much developed. So the later on, two to three things. After four weeks, we as we are allowing the animal to eat other food, like introducing the rabbit. Now the human four stomach is developed. So at the end, the maturity, only that four stomach is well developed. So that's what happened in the animal. While increasing, ruminants quickly move food into the rumen before it completely masturbates. This feed is then turned into the oral cavity to a focus before rumination or regurgitation. I told this one earlier. Rumination in the feed is a coordinated event involving the respiratory muscles, larynx, larynx, esophagus, oral cavity, and reticulum. At the height of the single contraction of reticulum, the animal inhales while the glottis is closed, so the air cannot flow into the lungs. This generates a great negative pressure in the thorax. The transfer of this negative pressure to the esophagus allows the bolus of reticular content to move through the cardia by the process of reverse peristalsis. Peristalsis, you know, to move into the oral cavity. So you know in animals we have sort of peristalsis, you know, the unidirectional movement, passing the food in one direction, especially towards the end. But in uh, ruminant animal, because of the skeletal muscle, there is reverse peristalsis, that that's how the gas is removed as well as the food for the regurgitation coming to the oral cells. Immediately there is a swallowing event that carries the liquid portion of the bolus back to the ruminant. If the remaining residue is chewed, the lifeway is added and again swallowed. So that is regurgitation. So this time which is involved in regurgitation, rumination, is depend on the diet. You say eat more coarse plants, uh, more coarse food. They uh, take more time. If cow consume a coarse diet, coarse hay, diet will spend at least eight hours in a day. So that's uh, for this, and the uh, ruminant microbial fermentation. Fermentation involves the anaerobic action of bacteria protozoa, the bacteria counting 80% of the ruminant metabolism. Primary bacteria are those that break down the dietary constituents, secondary bacteria further break down the end product of the bacteria. Secondary bacteria include those produced protozoa from lactates, methane processes producing bacteria. The protozoa consume large, uh, sorry, the protozoa consume human bacteria, plants, starch, granules, and uh, linoleic and linoleic acid. Human carbohydrate digestion. The products of the bacteria and protozoa carbohydrate digestion is the short chain water fatty acid, carbon dioxide, and methane. The major water fatty acid acetic here is coming, acetic propionic music. The proportion especially depends on the food it is consumed. It is 70 percent acetic acid, which produces the fatty acid. 15 to 20 percent propionic acid glucose production. 10 to 15 glucosic acid production. The percentage of propionic acid increase when the animal feed concentrate with a soluble sugar or starch. When you give more concent more concentrate, when you add solid things concentrate, they produce more. The Roman epithelium can absorb glucose and all the fatty acids. They also can absorb the glucose and all the fatty acids. Propionic acid will help to produce glucose. Roman protein digestion. Roman microbes hydrolyze the dietary proteins to website and synthesis. So in addition, these micro Organisms can make amino acids from protein hydrogen sources like urea and acid. And um, I told earlier, lipid digestion, triglycerides and are uh, hydrolyzed by luminal bacteria yielding glycerol and fatty acids. The glycerol is generally metabolized to propionic while the fatty acid passes the glycerol. Then the abomasum. So abomasum, as you you know it's two stomach. It's the first glandular portion of the dominant digestive system. It's located ventral to the abomasum and extemporally on the right side of the rumen. 
the pylorus, the terminal part of the abomentum we call pylorus. It's a sphincter. Sphincter means the thickening of circular muscles, small muscles. It is usually at the opening sites of any uh, organ, opening, exiting, and the outlet. They, they have these sphincters. Sphincters are thickening of smooth muscles. Okay, that controls the foot passage from the stomach to the intestine. The epithelium of abomentum changes abruptly from stratified surface epithelium to tall columnar epithelium. So, tall column, a simple column epithelium, produce mucus. So, the mucus which covers the stomach epithelium prevents the digestive juices from digesting the stomach. So, that's what I told. The so stomach, um, true stomach, it has the verb blood cell. Not this, G O B A B T. Verb blood cells are type of cells which is in the small intestinal, uh, sorry, the intestinal epithelium, even the Stomach epithelium, the specialized uh, epithelial cells, they produce mucus. The mucus, which makes a coat in the intestine or even the stomach. That helps to prevent auto autolysis. Autolysis means because of the digestive juice, they may digest the own cell or own epithelial line. So to prevent that, it secretes a large amount of mucus. Small intestine. The small intestine is the area where most of the digestion and 90% of the absorption occurs. Digestion occurs with the aid of accessory organs that produce necessary enzymes, buffers, and separation. The, the small intestine extends from the pylorus to the large intestine and is divided into three secretions duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. The duodenum is the first part of the small intestine, it's closely attached to the body wall by a short mesentery. Mesentery is the connective tissue. The mesentery is the connective tissue which attach to the body wall of the duodenum. Body wall attach the duodenum attach to the body wall is by the mesentery, mesoduodenum. It's a thin connective tissue. That's from the pancreas and the liver enters first part of the duodenum. The duodenum leaves the pylorus stomach and passes orally to the right side towards the head. The jejunum is in, this thing is separate from the duodenum. The jejunum and ileum are continuous and there is no gross demarcation between. So there are three portions in the small intestine, duodenum, jejunum, ileum. So it's very difficult to differentiate externally. Duodenum, you can see it's a U-shaped and there is pancreas close by, liver is there. The duodenum, you can somewhat, you can see. But jejunum, ileum, it's very difficult to differentiate grossly. But if you see a histology through microscope, when you need section, you observe through the microscope, you can differentiate the genome and media. It depends on the number of glands. Okay, not very different. And the more columnar cells in the letter part of the intestine. So that makes the difference. You can enter the large intestine at ileocecopolic junction. Ilio, seco, colic. Ilio means, uh, ilio is a part of the small intestine. Secum, colon are part of the that, uh, large intestine. Okay, so there are three. Ilio, seco, colic junction. Ilium, latter part of the small intestine. Secum and colon are small intestine, large intestine part. Okay, large intestine. The large intestine consists of the secum which is a blind sac and the colon, which consists of ascending transverse and descending part. The descending colon terminates at rectum and anus. Okay, there, are, there is considerably more variation in the large intestine, particularly ascending colon, from one stage to another than in the intestine. The ruminants, they have the large intestine, consists of cecum and colon. The cecum, so there are three parts in large intestine. Cecum, colon, and then rectum. That's the large intestinal part. The cecum has one blind end that projects bodily. Cranial is continuous with the colon. This junction is marked the entrance of ileum, ileo, seco, colic, or The colon passes foot uh, forward between the two layers of the which supports the small intestine. The attaches 
Recently, we this is the thin connective tissue like peritoneum I showed. This is the thin connective tissue. They attach the digestive system to the body wall. Just the, the digestive system is not hanging in the animal body. They are attached to the body wall. The different location it is different name. Peritoneum, especially in the uh, esophagus, because the peritoneum attaches the esophagus to the body wall. Then the mesentery attaches the rest. Okay, mesentery attaches the small intestine to the body. Wall. Then we continue cordially to the rectum and the anus. The terminal part is the digestive system of the rectum. So do we have any lectures at 10 o'clock? No, ma'am. Anyway, I'll stop you, okay, because maybe I'm under a lot of slides, so I'll stop and then would you give another time tomorrow? Another time tomorrow? Uh, I'm here, ma'am. Uh, okay, and um, can you give another one hour tomorrow? Otherwise, we end up.